Hey guys, it's JJ. Welcome to my Eagles franchise. I'm gonna try to have a, a blast with this series. It's gonna be probably five or six years again. And I'm gonna try to do it like ultra realistic. So yeah, we'll go through the roster to start this series. Jalen Hurts, 23, second year quarterback out of Oklahoma. And he has only normal dev, which is probably questionable. But maybe he can increase it and we'll stick with him or something like that. He has 87 speed, 89 acceleration, great change of direction. He has 86 throw power, which is not that much. And also his accuracies are not all that great. His awareness is pretty low. So yeah, that's a, con a controversy at the quarterback position to start this rebuild. But I really liked him coming out of college. I really hope he does well. And if he does, we'll stick with him. The other quarterbacks on the roster are Gardner Minshew. I signed Jamie Newman and Reed Sinnott. So yeah, we'll move on to running back, Miles Sanders. 83 overall, he's 24, third year out of Penn State. He is 5'11 and 211 pounds. I really like that he has star dev, but he's going to be out for most of the season. He has great speed and acceleration for a running back. Great juke and spin move. Or not like great, but okay, and you can work on that. He's only 24 after all. And he also has great break tackle. He can stiff arm somebody if he wants to. The other running backs. Boston Scott is on the roster. Kenneth Gainwell, they drafted him in the last offseason. I really liked him. He is only normal dev, but he has 90 speed, which is fine. He does not have the greatest acceleration. And he's probably never, never going to be like a really great power back, but he has a good juke move and an okay spin move. You can work on that. I really like him. He's going to split carries with Scott. Then they still have Jordan Howard. And I signed Travion Williams to fill out the like the bottom of the roster. For receivers, we have Devontae Smith, hidden dev, 6 foot 172, the Slim Reaper. He's only 22 years old, and he's gonna start his career here with 92 speed, 93 acceleration, great catching ratings. He's a great route runner. He's gonna be the number one of this team for a long time. He has only 70 release, which is the rating I'm most worried about but I am gonna work that in work on that in his rookie season they have Jalen Rager they drafted him a year ago and he was hurt for most of his rookie campaign he's a deep threat a pure deep threat he's not that great a route runner and I don't think he'll ever be probably but he is great jumping he he's a deep threat and that's what I'm gonna use him as. He's gonna be a slot receiver for me. I don't like to put um, deep threat on the outside if they don't have great release and Jalen Rager does not have a great release. And then Quez Watkins, he is the John Ross of this team. He's 23 also in his second year, 97 speed, no route runner at all and really bad release. So he's probably gonna be a slot option as well. Don't like to put the smaller receivers on the outside if they had a have a bad release rating and then they have another slot receiver Greg Ward he is 5 foot 11 190 and in his fourth year his contract is gonna come up probably and so he has pretty below average speed he's not that great a route runner don't think I'm gonna play a lot with him and then J.J. Ortega Whiteside already had him in my Lions franchise and here he is again but he's a year older and he will not start at 74 overall he will start at 70 overall and he's the only receiver on this original roster that is bigger than six foot and he has average speed but he's a great he has great ball skills and his deep route running is fine. And he also has 75 release, which is the highest on the team, if I remember correctly. So he will get a chance as the number two. And then I signed Dion Kane and Hakeem Butler to have a challenge for Ortega Whiteside. And then for tight end, this is the only like really big target for Jalen Hurts. Dallas Goddard, star dev with fine speed for a tight end, great catching ratings. He's not 
that means he's a good run blocker as well. 74 run blocking is not that bad. I signed Thaddeus Maas and then a few players to have like a bottom of the roster, but they're not going to matter really. And then for left tackle, Jordan Mailata, fourth year out of no college. And he has star dev, which is really important. He is a huge dude, six foot eight, 365. He has great ratings. Like he has no weakness at all, which I really love. You can work with him as a run blocker and a pass protector. And they also drafted Andre Dillard a couple years ago. And he is, he has a lot more weaknesses. He's six foot five, 315. He only has normal dev, which disqualifies him as the new left tackle because I'm gonna work with my Lada uh, until his contract is up. He's a really bad run blocker. And that is why I, I'm not sure if I wanna keep him around. Maybe if our right tackle retires after, year, after the year, I may be moving him to right tackle. But for now, he's just gonna be a backup. And then at left guard, Isaac Seomalo is hurt, but they drafted Landon Dickerson out of Alabama. He's 22 and he has hidden dev. It's probably going to be star, I would imagine. And he is a pretty bad pass protector. And also his run block finesse is not that great, but he has hidden dev. And that's why I'm going to start him, even if Seomalo might be coming back. So he's going to start at left guard. And then we have Jason Kelsey, superstar dev, but he is 33 years old. So we're probably going to have some regression at O-line after the next season or the next couple seasons. But he's a great everything. He's such a good run blocker, but he's also a above average pass protector. And that is why he's one of the best centers in the league. And then we have Brandon Brooks at right guard. But he's hurt and he's going to miss the rest of the season. Superstar dev, 32 years old. I have a feeling that maybe one or even both are going to retire out of uh, Kelsey and Brooks. But he's a great everything, great run blocker and great pass protector. Really love his skill set and I hope he sticks around for after this season. And then at right tackle, 31-year-old Lane Johnson, also superstar dev, 6'6", six 317 out of Oklahoma, and he is really solid across the board, has no weakness at all, and he's a top three tackle in this league. And I really hope he sticks around as well, but I imagine that at least one of them is going to retire after this season. And so we have foundation for an offensive line but we have to rebuild it probably and then for edge rushers brandon graham 33 years old but he has star dev he's gonna be out with an achilles tear and i fear that he's probably gonna be gone 33 years old that i imagined would be yeah probably a retirement after this season or at least like at latest next season and we also have Ryan Kerrigan. For the younger edge rushers, we have Josh Sweat, fourth year out of Florida State. He's 24 and he has star dev, great athleticism. He has good finesse and power moves, or like not good, but fine. You can work with that, he's only 24. And yeah, and he also has 70 block shedding. So he's not like completely useless as a block shedder, as a run stopper. And then we have Derek Barnett. Those two are going to start at edge rushers this season because Graham is going to be out. And Barnett is 25. He does only have normal dev. I think that is probably a little bit unfair to him. I think he's better than that. And I think he's also a better pow uh, power moves, like power rusher, than they say. But that's a foundation. 77 power moves, 74 block shading. You can work with that. And in the middle of this defense, Fletcher Cox, 30 years old, superstar X-Factor. He's a monster, but he's 30. And he probably is not going to stick around forever in this league. So I fear that we're going to lose him soon as well. This team has a lot of older players, but Fletcher Cox is really this, like the monster on this team. They also have Javon Hargrave, who is also 28, so he's gonna enter regression territory soon, and he has star dev. So, yeah, 
probably gonna need to rebuild that defensive line as well and he has he's a good finesse rusher but his run stopping is i mean it's fine but you probably are gonna need another run stopper in there for like the four three base packages and stuff so yeah and with that we're a linebacker the weakest position on the team we do not have a great linebacker i signed ruben foster to make it a little bit less of a weakness but He's already 27, he's not gonna develop a whole lot, he's only got normal dev, he's also only 6 foot 1 and 228, so he's a smaller linebacker, but he still has only 71 zone coverage. So not a perfect solution, but I think it's better than nothing. And yeah, probably not gonna see much of him after this season. And then they also have TJ Edwards, he's 25, but only 69 overall he has only normal dev he's not gonna develop a whole lot more than he is right now and he's only 77 speed which is way too slow for a linebacker so gonna need to rebuild that linebacker room although there is one player which is really young and has some potential he's 23 only normal dev davion taylor also one of the smaller linebackers six foot one two thirty and he has great athleticism, but his zone coverage is pretty terrible. So Ruben Foster with 71 zone coverage is our best linebacker, like his coverage linebacker. And then cornerbacks, Darius Slay, the ex-Lion. He's 30 and he has superstar dev. He's in his ninth year out of Mississippi State. He has great athleticism still at 30 and he's a great zone cover corner. I think his press rating is a little bit too low, but he's gonna be our number one. Our number two is gonna be Steven Nelson. He is star dev. He's already 28, so both our starting corners are in regression territory in the next offseason. But he is a man cover corner. His zone coverage is fine though, so he's gonna be in solid number two in this league, I would imagine. And he has not the greatest speed which is something that is way more important for cornerback than for any other position. And then we have Avante Maddox, the slot corner, 5'9", 184, has star dev, is 25. You can build this guy up to be a starting cornerback, but just in the slot. So gonna need to rebuild the cornerback room as well. He has great athleticism, so though. So that is like pretty well, like a pretty good, foundation and Josiah Scott 5'9 185 just a slot corner he's 22 though so yeah second year player but his zone coverage and his man coverage is pretty bad I don't think he's ever gonna become a starter in this league but we'll see another young cornerback I signed is Sam Beal 6'1 177 to maybe have an option after Slay or Steven Nelson if he like develops a little bit. He's a great press corner. He has fine speed, not great, but his zone coverage is pretty low too. And I guess he probably has the worst injury rating in the entire game. And then Zach McPherson, 23. They drafted him in the fourth or fifth round. 5'11", 195. I think he's just big enough to be an outside corner. But his coverage ratings need some work and his speed is not that great. So probably gonna address cornerback in the next offseason. And then take Gowan and Corey Vincent down at the bottom of the roster. For safeties, not happy with the safety situation either. Rodney McLeod, 5'10", 195, only normal dev. And only 84 speed as a free safety. Not happy about his skill set at all, I gotta say. He is probably going to be gone after this season. And then Anthony Harris, they signed him, but he already is 29 as well. So regression territory. He has star dev, but he is probably not going to stick around for a whole lot longer either. And he also does not have the greatest speed of all times. 86 speed. I mean, for a strong safety, I guess it's fine. But come on, 84 speed at free safety, that's not enough. And then they also have Kayvon Wallace out of Clemson. They drafted him a couple years back. He has fine speed, I think. And he might be someone who might be a starter 
even this season or maybe next season if I let both of the other safeties go. But I think he has a fine foundation. Does not have the greatest tackling or anything, but like him. And then we have Jake Elliott with 97 kick power. Love it. So we can kick the, the long yardage field goals. And then our partner is 28 and he does only have normal dev. He only has a 91 kick power and 71 kick accuracy. Probably going to be gone. And then we're going to move on to the draft picks. We have three first round picks this season. And we got one from Miami because they traded up to get Jalen Waddle. We get one for Carson Wentz. And I am really enjoying this set of like the slate of first round picks for next year. I love the new scouting update. I mean, I don't love it, but it's a huge improvement and I'm so excited to go get scouting, look at those players. We also get an additional fifth rounder from Washington, but that's it. We are gonna have 11, 10 picks. That's 10 picks for next season. And of course, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to see more Eagles franchise. Ring the bell for notification. We're gonna look last up of the episode we're gonna look at the salaries the biggest contracts right now brandon brooks jason kelsey darius slay fletcher cox lane johnson javon pargrave so those are all players that are linemen except slay and i think you need to pay linemen defensive or offensive to build a great foundation to run the football and stop the run on the other side but yeah, I think we are gonna have to rebuild a lot and that's what I'm excited, excited about. The contracts that are running out after this season is gonna be Jason Kelsey, Dallas Goddard, Steven Nelson, Anthony Harris, Rodney McLeod, Avante Maddox, Boston Scott, Ruben Foster and Derek Barnett. That is more than half of our defense and yeah. That is probably that defense is probably gonna look a lot different going like going forward from next season on because I'm probably not gonna resign a whole lot of those players and yeah so that is that is gonna do it for this short introduction into the Eagle franchise the next step is gonna be I'm gonna play the preseason I'm not gonna make a video out of it because I think in the first season you just want to take an opportunity to get to know the players and then the second year that is where the rebuild really starts. So that is why the next episode is going to be the first four games of the regular season. That is how I'm going to do it and a scouting update on every of those coming episodes is going to be included as well because I like to show the players I'm like the players that I'm probably gonna like have on my draft board for scouting and for drafting in the next offseason so there's gonna be a lot more scouting updates than in my last series with the Lions because now finally the scouting system makes some sense and that's gonna do it for this episode thanks for watching if you enjoy please leave a like and subscribe for more Eagles franchise see you in the next episode until then spread some love